Today, all flash arrays seem to be the cure-all for almost all performance problems in the environment. But there's really more to it to that. And they really appeal in environments like uh, virtualized environments and uh, databases and things like that. But surrounding that all flash investment with other capabilities is critical to really achieving the long-term return on investment. Joining me to talk about that is Phil Gilbert. He's 3PAR's uh, product manager. Phil, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Phil, you know, as I look at the kind of the guys that are sort of make that leap into an all flash array, after they do it, they tend to struggle with um, uh, three things. One is the fabric or the network that surrounds and connects that all flash array, because it doesn't, it's not wireless, right? <laughs> uh, that, that becomes suddenly really critical, right? Because now we don't have spinning hard drives, and so the latency here is very low, and so what all flash arrays do is tend to expose problems in the environment. Um, the second thing, of course, never goes out of style is uh, data protection. How do I protect that environment? And, and now I think users, because they get uh, really satisfied with the performance of the all flash array, they, they want the data protection process to not interfere with what's going on. Yeah. And then I think the third thing, of course, and also a thing that never seems to go away is disaster recovery, right? Is, now, I used to, in the 90s, I used to talk about disaster recovery, and I used to say, well, if your building is gone, people will be patient with you. I don't think you get that, <laughs> that anymore, right? You've got to be back up and going instantly, no matter what happened to people you. People aren't patient anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So what are you guys at HP Enterprise doing specifically to address these three issues? Yeah, so we have uh, we have a number of technology, and uh, the first and the most obvious one is you put an all-flash array in the environment, and you just shift the bottleneck. You know, that, that's a very common kind of um, side effect we see. So the most obvious thing, most, first of all, is to make sure that you, the rest of your fabric is up to, is, is up to speed. Okay. You know, if you're running an all-flash array and you've got a four or an eight gig fiber channel environment, that's you're just moving the bottleneck into right. your fabric. So your guys are pr recommending 16 gig fiber here? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. The next one, of course, becomes the management of your fabric. Okay. Because when you're talking about um, you know, you know, large, complicated fabrics, it can become quite arduous to kind of manage everything. You know, it just simply adding a new host become right. you know, quite, quite... Well, we've got a simple one here, but in, obviously an all-flash array can support hundreds of hosts and thousands Absolutely. of virtual machines. Yeah. yeah, so one of the things we have is a technology called SmartSan. And okay. what SmartSan does is allows the three-par management console to manage the fabric as well as the you know, three-par itself. What I see a lot of times in, in environments is when you know you have this really fast box and then all of a sudden it's hindered because it takes three weeks to provision network services for it. So this sounds like that takes care of that for me. Absolutely. So what it allows us to do is from the array we can actually see the entire fabric and all the hosts. Okay. So if you have a new host added to the environment, for example, we can see it attempting to log into the switch. And then we can start adding that, you know, that host profile to the switch. We can start provisioning storage from it without having to break out into the actual fabric management. Okay, that's very interesting. And then, what about uh, data integrity in the fabric? Yeah, so this is one of the, the new, sort of the biggest challenges that people are getting to meet now. In that, when we're talking about consolidation of multiple storage arrays, you know, especially large enterprise ones, down to a single or flash array, we're suddenly consolidating what was, you know, several arrays that did 10, 15,000 IOPS down to a single array that's now doing millions. Right. So that's the classic: all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. So yeah. it's really important to make sure that the data that's actually being sent from the host isn't becoming corrupted from that to actually hitting the SSDs. Right. Okay. So what we use is we use technology called persistent checksum. Okay. And that allows us to ensure that the data that's actually been sent from the HPA, which comes along with a checksum, is checked the entire way through the fabric. So as we do that, as it goes through the fabric and into the array, we actually check that that data is the same data that, that, that was actually sent from the host. But further than that, we actually have hardware integration into each one of our controllers that ensures that all the way down to the actual drive underneath the all flash array, that even that is actually being checked for consistency. So end to end checking there. Absolutely. Okay. So I think that takes care of a lot of the fabric issues. Let's talk a little bit about data protection. So there's a few things. I mean, first of all, um, you know, the, the 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 obvious one is how do I take a consistent snapshot of my application without, um, you know, especially in a VM environment without horrible growth and all the kind of things that everyone is more than aware of. Now, we have a technology called Recovery Manager Central. Okay. And what that allows us to do is take VM consistent snapshots or application consistent snapshots on the actual array itself without worrying about holding data on the application. So I get good, clean snapshots down here. Absolutely. So okay. it, think of it as kind of like an orchestration plane where we can have our Recovery Manager Central object and that allows us to take, it's, it's, it's like an orchestration engine, really. And what it allows us to do is take a, an application consistent snapshot of a virtual machine, 
then orchestrate the array to take an application consistent snapshot down at the actual array point of view. And then we can remove the, the VM snapshot again. And now we're holding that consistent snapshot on the array. So my only impact here is essentially one snapshot, and then my historical snapshots can stay on the... Absolutely. Okay. And then what about just uh, getting data off of the box to, say, a backup uh, device? Yeah, so this is the age-old problem of backup, you know, ones that's at the bottom of everyone's list of priorities. And what we're doing is trying to sort of really simplify that. So if our, our backup technology is called store once and store once is a disk to disk backup technology it's a deduplicating one and what recovery manager central allows us to do is create an orchestration plane that adds this into huh. our data protection story so the store once technology can basically pull di uh, data directly from the all flash array. So I don't have to go back up through to the virtual infrastructure at all? So you're never touching the hosts. Okay. So from that perspective, it's fantastic because we can start talking about really, really fast backups because it's essentially either direct connected or straight across the fabric. Okay. And then it, are you transferring the whole backup over or are you just leveraging deltas? Well, this is the beauty of it because Recovery Manager Central is taking these consistent snapshots. All we need to do is move the deltas between the last consistent snapshot and the current point in time. So the amount of data we're actually transferring is a fraction of what you would do in a traditional backup environment. Okay. So that takes care of data protection, I think. So how about the big one, uh, disaster recovery? How do we take care of that? Yeah, so disaster recovery is one of those things, and you said about um, you know, putting all your eggs in one basket. And when right. we're talking about consolidation of these arrays, this becomes a, you know, a central point. Now, that array has to be up all the time. Sure. And you need to be protected in the event that something happens to the entire site or you know, a couple of hosts or you know, anything in the environment could go down and making sure you can protect against that. Now, one of the ways we achieve this is by creating a, a second site um, with a, a second or flash array on it. And what we do is we stretch the fabrics across so that they become a single fa fabric stretched across multiple locations. Okay. What we can then do is if we have uh, a volume, we can replicate that volume between the two or flash arrays so that the same volume is essentially available from both both arrays. Okay, and then you would have virtual machines and stuff on in the secondary site? Absolutely, so we can have a virtual machines or we can have three hosts over here and the idea of this is that what we create is a single vSphere cluster that's stretched across both both of the sites. Okay, and then so that the has access to essentially the same data on both sides? Well, this is it. So when I, when I wanted to access this volume from any one of these hosts on either site, that volume is now accessible from both storage arrays. So as far as this host is concerned, it can see access to it through both storage arrays. Okay, because it's essentially a single instance just stretched across the as, Yeah, as far as the host yeah. is concerned, it's seeing one volume presented from multiple locations. All right, so what if something fails at 2 o'clock in the morning I'm asleep? Well, this is the great thing. So now that you've got everything available from both sites, if you lose the array on this site or if you lose the host or you lose everything on this site, what the array on the second site will do is detect the failure of the primary site and it will bring the volumes up on the, the secondary site, it, whichever way around this is. So it can be either way. Now, because the volumes have come available, VMware's HA will kick in and start restarting. The VMs that failed over this side will now start being brought up on the second side. So automatically. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. So that takes care of the. I think that takes care of the disaster uh, recovery problem as well. It does. And and the, the one of the things that is most critical with this is is knowing what's going on in the environment. Right. Whether that's just from um, you know getting alerts about the environment or whether that's um, you know getting an understanding of what's actually happening in your environment. Okay. So from that perspective, all of this technology, whether it's from the host all the way down to the actual drive itself, is all that data is sent home, and that forms part of our cloud analytics platform. Okay. And then what does that give me some advice on how to better run the environment? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, when we're talking about sort of um, data protection and disaster recovery, it also comes down to what happens if I run out of space, or how do I know that I'm getting the most out of my storage? Right? Okay. So it gives you analytics in the how balanced is your environment. You know, where could you shift data to? Uh, what changes could you make to make sure that your environment is giving you the best. Okay, so then we could do plus analytics. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, Phil, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. So there you have it. All flash arrays, just the first step. You need an entire ecosystem around that all flash array to make sure you get maximum return on investment. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.